so Danny Mills says that Gareth Southgate would be perfect for Manchester United. Gareth Southgate can deal with pressure. Gareth Southgate can deal with the media. And he's someone who gets on with players. Danny, I mean, without stating the bleeding obvious, I would have thought that that is, is the job description in itself. That's the very least that he's asked to do. Um, of course he deals with pressure. Of course he has to deal with the media. And of course he has to get along with the players. So why would that make him box seat for Manchester United? Well, I, I said two years ago, I did a piece saying that I thought Gareth would be a better bet than Ten Hag. I kind of still think they'd probably be in a better place if they'd made that decision, to be honest. Um, what he means is the England job in itself is huge pressure and probably comparable to being in the hot seat at Man U. There's not many jobs that are comparable to being in the hot seat at Man U. And if you were sitting here objectively, you'd say that the England job is huge scrutiny and huge pressure. It's talked about continuously. Being in charge of Ajax isn't the same, if you're looking at the Ten Hag comparison. Um, in terms of man managing players, he's created an atmosphere at England that's not been seen for a long time, where players are actually really looking forward to going there and wanting to play for him. There's a harmony in the England squad that's not been there for a long time. And that's been talked about a lot too. And he's created that. You could argue that Gareth, one of his strengths is dealing with the press. I think he's super articulate. He's calm, humble guy who deals with the press as well as any England manager I've seen. Now, in terms of question marks around tactical and, you know, getting over the line, winning things, fine. That's a, that's a football debate. But the, the subjects we've just talked about, he's more than capable of... of walking in the Manchester United seat. But that tactical bit that you just mentioned there that you virtually glossed over is surely the most important bit. The tactical bit leads to winning. Well, and he's, that he's, he's put, is what he, he hasn't managed to do yet. He hasn't managed to get his hands on a trophy yet. No, and that's different level, isn't it? International football, club football, two different things. Um, managers winning in the Premier League in our country, if you, for example, I mean, all right, Klopp had won in Germany, but he come here and, and had success. And people question Mark, you know, he hasn't won it, he hasn't done this in this country. We're always looking at managers' CVs and expecting them to walk through the door and cre recreate that CV. So Van Gaal, Mourinho went to Manchester United, they weren't happy. They've tried that. So maybe think outside the box. What do Man United need? They need a, a club that's brought together and has a harmony that, that Gareth has created at England. So that's probably something that goes in his favour. He's great with young English players. He seems to get on with high... Do you, think, do you think Man United had lots of harmony when Alex Ferguson was there? I think the players were together and on board with I the I think manager, they understood yeah. their responsibilities, but I don't think there was a, a, an ordinate amount of harmony. You can well, look at the well, disruption between Sheringham and Cole and you can look at the, the dynamics of other players. Disruption in, in what way? In terms of the players. The fact they didn't speak, but there was no disruption. And, and the fact that, they, they, that there were issues with the way that the players interacted with one another, but they had a very strong leader. I think the argument for Gareth Southgate becomes more compelling than it's ever become if he wins the European Championships. Mm. I, I have regularly... And Danny Mills makes a point, but uh, tragically for his arguments, is that Gareth Southgate wasn't in situ for Middlesbrough for five minutes. He was in situ for three and a half years. Mm. And, and with that period of time, you learn your trade and you learn uh, to adapt to the circumstances. And if you've got a 30%, 29% win record at a football club that landed in a championship, you don't take that as a blueprint, irrespective of whether you're 36 and you come out of it at 39. And also the, de the, de the definition between... The difference, the distinction between being able to pick the best players in the country, yet, uh, yet in a domestic football club, being responsible for the economics of the decisions you make. It's a different kind of pressure. United and England do have comparable attention in terms of people's focus on what they do and don't do. It is comparable to suggest that the scrutiny that an England manager gets is comparable to a Man United. The difference is, is that as an England manager, you get to pick the best players in the country and you get to pick them for free. As a Manchester United manager, you get responsible for the economics of the decisions that you make when you're buying players. Well, probably less responsibility on if he went through the door this summer than what Ten Hag's had because of, of the, well, new, not, the new not, appointments not, not, in well, recruitment. If you make the argument that managers are not involved in the decision-making process, then yes, you can have that argument. If you have the argument that managers are involved in the decision-making process but not the economics, then you can't have that Well, he would be involved, well, but I'm saying less so than Ten Hag's Danny, been given. Let's, let's take it further, though. You talked about in situ. Ten Hag is in situ at Manchester United. Mm. So would you have him at Liverpool? <laughs> Good question. Um, what point no. would you have Gareth Southgate at Liverpool? I thought that's what you meant. Would you have Would you have Gareth Southgate at Liverpool? It depends on what the other options were. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. 
Right. So why are you so, I think so, so why are you keen to have him at United? Well, exactly. I think Liverpool have got a better option at the moment in Alonso. So I would be going all out to get him. So well, Alonso is a better I'm, option I, than Southgate for Liverpool. Yeah. And yet you'd have Southgate at Manchester United. At the moment, if you're looking at the options out there for Manchester United, would... would well, they've got do plenty I, of options. Do I, yeah, there are. But we haven't got to that point in the discussion. I'm talking a st- from a starting point of saying Southgate... I think when my did my piece two years ago when I said that, I think Southgate would have been a better option than Ten Hag. And I think United would be in a better place now Why? if they'd had Southgate. Why? Because of did, all the reasons I've just said. Well, OK, so you think, seriously, for a manager... Well, they wouldn't have wasted £300 million on those players who, well, who aren't good enough. Well, we don't know that. Right. No, but well, the, we I, don't I'm know what he sure. would have what he would have chosen, what he wouldn't have chosen, right? But we the bigger issue is not necessarily the players that they've bought; it's the culture that's been allowed to fester. That's your, that's your belief. Well, you can see it. You can see Marcus Rashford. Culture you can see is created dispute. by good players. You can players. see Fernandez. You can see the culture of that football club where they don't get the responsibility that they have of playing for an elite football club. Now, your suggestion is that Southgate would have been better at that than Ten Hag. Yeah, well, well, that that's, is a suggestion. that's very subjective. Well, now, now, what the business it. of Man United is is not. That side of things is winning. That culture is about winning. Right? And if you start winning, you start proving your point. So we've got a guy that's been arguably allowed to manage a team that consists of team of, that were put together as a domestic side might win the Premier League. And his contribution is to fall short every time the business end comes to pass. Croatian semi-final, European Championship final against Italy and not dealing with the French the way we could have done. You can put the penalty in the mix, I grant you, but England should have taken control of the game before they even needed the so penalty. So if Saka and Rashford score the pens and they win the Euros, is he a Manchester United manager? Mm, they, not necessarily, but it makes a more compelling argument than someone that... Because const- of two individuals not being able to take penalties. But they didn't. But, but, no, I know. We have the, to deal but, in the But prior in the to facts. that, Danny, it's not about the fact that they miss a penalty. It's about the fact that they had opportunities to take control of games. They did. And they didn't do it. And the reasons they why did. they didn't do it is because the manager doesn't make decisions. But I'm not saying he's perfect candidate. So, I, I'm saying in comparison to so other candidates, the argument, and they've gone down the route of Mourinho, they've gone down the route of their, the tried and trust. Uh, okay. Who else could you have... They've tried Van Gogh, they've tried Mourinho. Let's think outside the so box. If They're trying United, to move If Man United forward. were alighting upon Alonso, right? because at this moment in time, Alonso looks like he's going to buy Munich. Right? Yeah. So in that straight race, if Man United were looking at Alonso, because you're seeming to discount the fact that Man United can look at just the same managers well, they, as yeah, Liverpool can, can, can right? Yeah. And we're advocating Southgate. And I'm going down your route of saying, well, there's a much better argument for him if he wins the European Championship I because surely, surely Man United uh, want winners. Yeah. There are lots of arguments against him in terms of it is one thing completely and utterly different ball game managing the England national side as it is to managing a domestic football club with the day-to-day issues. And over the last two years of Man United, look at what he'd have had to have managed. Mason Greenwood, Jason yeah. Sancho, all of these things that are not problems for him at England level because he just kicks them out of the squad yeah. with no consequences. Well, you see, the man himself was in here, wasn't he? Gareth Southgate, not that long ago, was in here. And we spoke about him. Are you a winner? You know, when it comes down to it, it hasn't happened for you uh, with England. You haven't got your hands on a major trophy. And we touched on that, of course, when Gareth was in. You can only answer that by winning. So in the end, if that's the only assessment of anything, then you have to accept as a football manager, you've got to get into that winner's enclosure. Now, only one international team can win. And as I said, you've got one opportunity every two years to do that. So if in the end that's that's the judgment, that that is what it is. We obviously hadn't been to a final for 50, 60 years. So take myself out of it, but these players have managed to give the country some incredible nights over the last few years and their the appreciation of what they have done I think is important because there was a lot of fear around playing for England and, and they've managed to be a really good version of themselves in an England shirt No, we can't, they can't argue with that, Simon Well, he's a very fortunate fellow because he's got a bloody good side with bloody good players that are not very much to do with him they've been reproduced by football clubs and ultimately he's, had, he's been a beneficiary of wonderful draws that most England managers would have bent over backwards to have gotten. The argument that Southgate fits Man United, despite my trying he's a, to... Ban- he's a candidate, we're not but, saying but he's perfect. his style of play, I mean, how does his style well, of play... Well, OK, so we, let, let, let's we, deal with that. Got, we've got a side that should go into the European Championship let, let's, and smash the okay, opposition. OK, let's deal with style won, of play. United at the moment, United, foot. United under 10 United Arbor, want to play that way. United, they might do, but let's be realistic. United are all over the place, too easy to play against. Right, wide open. Yeah, so, you always said that. So, so actually, what do United really need? Do they need a gung-ho manager who's going to try and play this expansive attacking football and think they're going to cross the bridge to Man City and Liverpool by doing that? No, they need some legs in midfield. They need, they need some <laughs> pragmatism. 
some legs across all areas of the pitch, some energy, some youth, you know, that that, that kind of hard-to-beat team, then you have a platform to go and play the football. Well, then you, buy the, right, go- you buy the right personnel. But, I mean, why you, you don't ask Liverpool to be pragmatic, do you? You don't ask Man City no, to be Liverpool's pragmatic. Liverpool's defensive record is, is equal but, to but, those but in the division. We're talking about clear evidential issues around Manchester United that they're easy to play through. They're easy to play through with Bruno Fernandes and Christian yeah, Eriksen in the middle part. Solve. You've said it all along, He right? would solve. And he'd solve that. But, but it, it's, uh, it's unfathomable have, it, why Ten Hag doesn't see it. But this is Southgate does. But still, notwithstanding that, we still, we've got all of these solutions for England. They're all there, right? And so England have got that set up, yet we play pedestrian football. And we might go and win it now. We may well do. Do you? Do, would you bet that Southgate is going to be a very brave manager in this tournament and stick it on the I opposition? I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, well, there we are. But How does that we're make talk- him a Man United manager? Well, we're talking about viable options. We're not talking about the perfect Canuck candidate because I don't think there is one. And I think let's just take it back. Didn't you or haven't you spoken about Pochettino at Chelsea? This massive rebuild which United are on and need. Yes. Pochettino, as you've said, I think, so forgive me if mm-hmm. I'm mistaken, but I think you've said that Pochettino is going to be somebody who makes Chelsea competitive again, but ultimately not get them over the line. Yes. Simplified. Yeah. Well, maybe Man United need to be a bit more realistic in their thinking. If they think oh, they're going to bring a manager in who's going to compete and get them winning the league and Champions League in the next couple of years, they're very much mistaken, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think a manager coming in and getting them stable again and taking them to a level of competitiveness... They don't it's have pro- that luxury. Well, it's probably the next... Well, whether they have it or not, that's the reality. So you would, you would say, yeah, thumbs up. If, if he wins the Euros, or even if he doesn't win the Euros, Danny, I think he would be. Yes, cl- he'd be suited to to start. I the, think the you Radcliffe could. Revolution, I think like. you could do a lot worse than get Southgate in situ at United. So now, Danny Murphy says uh, Manchester United could, could do a lot worse than Gareth Southgate. Absolutely. Danny Mills says it'd be perfect for Manchester United. I don't think United. I don't think there's a perfect candidate for Manchester United. What do you think out there? Because don't think this that is exists. what counts to us, of course, this morning as always. Give us a shout on it. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four <laughs> eight ten eighty nine. Gareth for Old Trafford. <laughs> Wowzer, everybody having their say on this one. So Gareth Southgate, of course, leading England into their international with Brazil this Saturday night. Thereafter, it's a big build-up, the serious build-up to the Euros and the Euros itself in Germany. Gareth and England tipped to go all the way by many and win in Germany. But maybe he mean, he needs to because they've knocked on the door on more than a few occasions but haven't won anything sizable yet, like a World Cup, of course, like the Euros where they... Came so close, admittedly, at Wembley, but lost out to the Italians on penalties. Uh, Danny Mills uh, isn't saying, he informs me, that uh, Gareth Southgate would be perfect for Manchester United if that opportunity came along uh, at the start of the Sir Jim Ratcliffe uh, revolution, if you like. He says he'd be a fit for what they need. Mm. Which is what you're saying, Danny, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dan Ashworth hasn't got many decisions wrong, says uh, Danny Mills. So... That is essentially what you're saying. But then, curiously, and many people have picked up on this, Danny, when I put it to you, all right, but there's a position available at Liverpool, you are hesitant. <laughs> and many people now locking into that. Rob is one of them. The brass neck on Danny Murphy saying United should go for Southgate, then hesitating I didn't when try. his beloved I... Liverpool <laughs> were brought into the equation. I said there's a better <laughs> option for Liverpool. I don't know. I can't think of one for Man United. And I'm not suggesting Man United... Was that not an easy way out, saying that Alonso is a better option for Liverpool than Southgate would be? Well, it's be? honesty. Would you want Southgate as Liverpool's manager, irrespective of... of if, if Alonso was an option, would, you be, happy, a, would you be happy with Southgate as Liverpool manager? Um, there we are. I'd be all right with it. You lying hound. I would. I'd be all right with it. Oh, Jesus. You just took my, nose, my eye out of your <laughs> nose. Basically, what you're saying is, with all these great qualities, being able to deal with the media and young players, etc., etc., as you've listed, surely he would be as effective with Liverpool as he would be with Manchester United. I think Two United. Giants of the game. I think Gareth's qualities are better suited at the moment to what Manchester United need. Liverpool don't need some of the things he brings. And that's what Danny Mills is saying. To be fair, both of them are saying something similar I mean, from a prescriptive point of view, that given where United are, not where they want to be, mm. that maybe Southgate and some of the qualities he has is what they really need. He's a bridge. Rather, rather He's a, than what he'd be a good bridge to the next up. level for sure. Yeah, and that depends if he wants Just to be Just before we go to the call, Simon, if you're Sir Jim, do you employ Gareth, whether they win the Euros or not? Um, not no, not for me. I mean, I know that Danny Mills made an observation about me making as many, not, not Dan Ashworth not making as many good decisions. I think when you're in positions of influence, you do make some bad decisions and good decisions. You learn learn from them. One of the best decisions I made was when they asked me to do, do some more, more shows with Danny Mills. I said no. Um, but the point is, is no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't uh, look at South. Korea. I understand completely. The, this ain't this. Look, it's not I, aspirational about it. I understand the argument against him. 
I do. Because and what is that argument against them? From a footballing perspective, I understand that a fan would Surely also... Surely that's the only perspective. No, there's a lot more to this football and what Manchester United need at the moment and just on the pitch. I mean, on the pitch is key and I'm not suggesting that Gareth's incapable. What I'm saying is that what a lot of United fans want and automatically assume that he wouldn't bring is this attacking, free-flowing football of old that they're used to seeing at Old well, Trafford. on the pitch, isn't it? And I get... Yeah. Right. But that's where... Well, he wouldn't, would he? Well, <laughs> this is where I think you have to give him a bit more credit because... When you're walking into a club that has the capability of buying some of the best players or best talent, up and coming talent in the world, maybe maybe there would be a more front foot version. So, so we've, of, got, we, we've got some of the best players in world football right now. And we've got the we've best had Bellingham forward. for 18 months. Well, okay, but we've had 18 months of, of, of football that hasn't been what you're describing. At times, I mean, I went to the World Cup and I saw that with some of those games with some of the players that we're talking about, with the Declan Rices of the world and the Sackers and the Phil Fodens and the deployment of them. And I sat there in the, in the, watching England against USA getting outplayed by USA. I watched opportunities against the French when we had the opportunity. Make, you can make the point about Harry Kane missing a penalty. Yeah, we played but what about the point so. when we were in ascendancy and could have stuck it on the French and allowed them back in the game before we even needed to get a penalty to equalise? Yeah. This is the criteria of a manager that, to me, is a very capable operator so and a very good England manager, but not a domestic manager, in my opinion. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.